Now that we have an understanding of the income statement, let's turn to the balance sheet. And I've loaded up Southwest Airlines balance sheet here, and we'll take the same approach as we did with the income statements. We'll first look at the layout of the balance sheet, the sections and the summary lines, and then we'll come back and do a little bit more detailed analysis on some of the different line items. Now, before we dig into Southwest balance sheet, I want to do a quick introduction of balance sheets so that we're all working off the same base of knowledge. So I have a, a balance sheet layout here, and I'm going to use an example that I often see used, which works pretty well, I think. And that's the example of home ownership. So let's say you are about to buy a home. You're a first time homeowner and you're going to buy a house worth $100,000. The house costs $100,000. Well, like a lot of home purchasers, you don't have $100,000 in cash. You're going to borrow money in addition to the cash you have. You're going to use your cash as leverage to buy a house that's worth more than the money you have in the bank. And your leverage is going to be through a mortgage. You're going to take on a mortgage. And let's say, I don't know, let's say you're going to borrow $70,000. Well, if you're going to borrow $70,000 on a $100,000 house, then that assumes that you're going to put in uh, $30,000 of your own cash. Okay. Now let's see, let's see what that looks like in your personal balance sheet. And whether you are a, uh, an individual, a company, or a government, the balance sheet looks the same for all. You know, they're little, one might be more complicated than the other, but the layout and the process is all the same. There are three sections of the balance sheet. The first is called assets. Over here, we're going to put assets. The second section is called liabilities. Liabilities. And the third section is called equity, or for a company, we might call this stockholders' equity or shareholders' equity. Now, let's make your entries into your balance sheet. And as the, as the name applies, the, the items that the entries that we make must balance out. And the way I've drawn this balance sheet, the columns have to sum to the same total. So your assets have to balance with your liabilities and your equity. So your asset, you have just one asset in this simple example. You have assets of $100,000 and you have liabilities, you have an obligation to the bank to pay back your mortgage of $70,000, and you have equity. Your equity is the cash that you put into the house, which is $30,000, okay? And now we can see they balance out. Your assets equal to $100,000. Your liabilities are 70, your equity is 30, and they sum to 100 as well. Now, if you were going to go and make subsequent purchases or uh, changes to your finance, you would make other entries in your balance sheet. Whatever entry you make, you have to make a corresponding entry so that it balances out. So uh, this column will always equal the, the sum of these two sections, and uh, that's that's where you get the term balance sheet. Okay, so let's Let's uh, go and take a look at the Southwest Airlines balance sheet and see if we can, we can get the amount for their assets, liabilities, and equity. And we'll come back and enter them into our little balance sheet here and see how they compare. So let's go back here. And we'll just take a quick look at the layout. It's very similar to the income statement. So we have the title balance sheet. In the horizontal columns here, we have the time periods. This is the same, these are the same four time periods as we saw in the income statement example. Uh, we're going to take a look at the, the leftmost quarter, which is the fourth quarter of 2012. And we're going to see that we have the same three sections as we just saw on the blackboard. We have assets and then we have liabilities and equity. Now the liability and equity section on this balance sheet are together. So we're going to have to separate them out to get the separate totals. Oops, went a little bit too far. 
and the scroll is getting ahead of me here. Okay, so the liabilities and stockholders equity section are uh, in one place here. So let's go back up and get the amount of Southwest's assets. So here's the heading of that section. The total is down here. So all of these line items are what make up their assets. And we're going to come back and take a look at some of those. But let's just stay at a high level here. And we will note that Southwest Airlines has total assets of 18.596 billion. So let's come back here and we'll make an entry for Southwest. And they have assets of 18.596. So now we have to find liabilities and equity that also equal 596. So we're gonna come back to our balance sheet. We'll scroll down to the liabilities and equity section. And in this case, the liabilities are not nicely summed for us. So we're gonna to have to do a little bit of addition ourselves. This scroll is just a little bit hard to use for some reason. It's getting, it's scrolling further than I'm telling it to scroll. Okay, I'm gonna scroll just a little bit more there. Okay, and let's see, we have our liability section goes down to here. So below that we have equity, above here we have liabilities, and we're gonna to have to just sum up the different line items for liabilities. So here we have a subtotal for current liabilities, and then these other liabilities which are detailed out here. And we just need to add those together so that we get our um, total liability. So we're going to go and use our calculator here, add those numbers together real quickly. So 5960 plus 2883 plus 2884, oops, plus 2884 plus 63 plus 1124 equals 11604. So the total liabilities for Southwest are 11.604 billion. Let's go ahead and make that entry on our liabilities here, 11.604. And now our equity, now we could just take our equity from the difference of our assets and liabilities because that's also the definition of, of, S, of equity. Whatever you own uh, so, you know, minus what you owe is what is actually your, uh, the value you have in the company or in your house. But we're going to go back and just make sure everything works and take a look at our balance sheet here. And we'll see if they add up. I was looking for my pen there. 6992 of stockholders' equity. So Southwest has 6.992 6, billion dollars of equity. And let's just do that math and make sure that everything adds up nice so we're going to say our liabilities of 11604 plus the equity of 6992 equals 5996 so we we have a balance sheet that balances out our liabilities plus our equity equals the same total as our assets so that is uh, so all of our entries are correct so you can see that the Southwest Airlines balance sheet looks remarkably similar to your own personal balance sheet. Now, of course, there's many, many more things that go into Southwest assets and liabilities and equity. And we're going to take a look at those in the next video and um, try to make some put these in context, because as you look at these absolute numbers, they don't tell you a whole lot about the performance of the company, right? You can, you can see something about the liabilities versus the equity, uh, but just knowing that they have $18 billion of assets without comparing that to something doesn't really tell you too much. I just want to make one note here uh, before we move on to the next video, and that's on equity because this can, this can be a little bit misleading. When we, when we talk about the value of equity in public companies, we generally think about the market cap, the market capitalization, or what the stock market places as a value on the equity of the company. This is different. This is, the, this is also called the book value. 
Uh, now there's a couple of different ways to calculate book value, but let's not let's not get too deep into the definition. For an airline, the equity is very close to the book value, and this is the value of the equity that's on the books. The value of the the equity on the books does not change from day to day with the price of the stock at the, on the stock market. It's derived from the difference of these two things. So in theory, if this company was sold, if all of the assets were liquidated and then all of the creditors were paid off, then the, the, the shareholders, the owners of the company would get what's left. And that would be the difference of what you started with minus the liabilities that you paid off. So that's the theory. Now, in reality, the value that the stock market places on the company tends to be higher than the actual book value of the equity. So Southwest has a book value of 6992. Uh, they have a market, a market cap, and I just went out to the internet and looked at this. They have a market cap of about 13, 13 billion. So almost twice as much, 1. I don't know, 1.8, 1.9 uh, times the book value is the market cap. And so, so companies tend to sell at a multiple to their book value. And there's a ratio that is sometimes used by Wall Street analysts, and that's called the price to book ratio. So the price meaning the market cap, the price that the stock market is placing on the company, divided by the book value and you get some ratio and I, I wish I did the math here I don't want to take the time but I think I think there's let's say it's one point it's you know 1.8 the price to book for Southwest is 1.8 and if you were to, to compare Southwest Airlines book value or excuse me price to book value to other airlines you might get a sense of whether Southwest is undervalued or overvalued by the stock market and that might give you some indication of whether the stock is a good buy. I don't, I don't really think that's a great um, way of evaluating whether, the, whether an airline is a good investment, but that's the, that's the idea behind it. And what I really just wanted to, do, to clarify for you is don't look at the value of equity on a balance sheet and, and associate that with the, with the value of the company in the stock market. They're two different things. All right, so now um, in the next video, we're going to come back and we're going to, Got to get a clean balance sheet and we're going to go into some of these line items and see what they tell us. See you then.